All right, so you at this point most likely have heard of Bitcoin. And if you're an investor who likes to put their money into assets that make you laugh, you might have heard of Dogecoin as well. Wow, such money, said nobody who ever put their money behind that currency. Well, buckle up, because there's a new cryptocurrency on the market. And it sounds like such a good investment that you might not think Dogecoin sounds dumb any longer. Well, what if I were to tell you that there was a cryptocurrency whose value is backed by the Venezuelan economy? Yes, apparently that still exists. Well, you might slam the door in my face, but recently Venezuela became the first country to issue a cryptocurrency. A Venezuelan Bitcoin. The president said it'll be backed by his country's ample oil, gas, gold and diamond reserves. But economists say such a system needs the confidence of investors. The Venezuelan Bitcoin, also known as the Petrocoin, or in Venezuelan, El Petrocoin. Because of course it had to be male. You know the value of Bitcoin is largely based on the belief that Bitcoin is valuable? Well, this petrodollar actually has its value tied to the value of a barrel of oil. Great, because when I want stability, I look to the price of oil. So what does it mean to say that this currency is backed by the price of oil? Well, and this is a little unconventional, but... Maduro has had back 5 million barrels of oil to back the first round of petrocoins that will be released. This means that if, at any point, you wanted to buy oil with your petrol coin, there's a set and unchanging amount of oil that you could buy with this type of crypto coin. Now, this may sound like some sort of radical new idea, but it's actually one of the major things that led to the US dollar being the powerhouse it is. So, let's go back to 1944 in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 allied and associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. Invited by President Roosevelt to the first major world financial meeting since the London Conference of 1933, they will work in the seclusion of this White Mountains resort. Yes, 44 major world leaders got together to talk finance. Because, you know, it's not like there was anything more important going on. I mean, D-Day had happened a whole month ago. I find it hard to imagine that the French leader could contribute very much to the conversation, considering he might have been more concerned with, oh, I don't know, there being no France on the map? Anyways, they met in the seclusion of a resort in Bretton Woods, from July 1st to, oh my gosh, really? July 22nd? Well, okay, we really were pretty cocky about that whole Nazi problem, weren't we? So, what did we discuss? Well, one of the largest things to come out of the meeting was the US tying its dollar value to gold, creating the gold standard. This meant that at any moment, you could exchange one dollar for a set quantity of gold. Now, this system lasted a surprisingly long time, but was finally dismantled in 1971. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. Don't worry, Nixon. Private industry would come to take over in a completely non-exploitionary way. So, just briefly for all those armchair economists out there, why did we leave? Well, because while it gives your money an inherent value, there are a few problems. First, and this might be joy to Rand Paul's ears, but you can't really print money to pay for things, unless you get more gold. And considering the only pirating the US has done is torrenting, our gold acquisition game is not on point. It basically means that having a job at the Federal Reserve Bank in America would have been the easiest job ever, as all you could really do was watch and see what happens. It also means that if someone stumbles on some new gold or a different country starts selling off gold reserves, that would have a very real impact on the value of the US dollar. So with all of that in mind, let's loop back to El Petrocoin. So why would Maduro want to have a currency that's tied to an asset? especially an asset as volatile as oil. Well, it turns out that the free-floating currencies have not been too kind to Venezuela recently. Prices rise almost daily. Inflation in November was nearly 57%. The accumulated rise this year is 1,370%. 1,370%? 1, 
That means that if you had $1,000 at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, you'd have the equivalent to $68. This is less of an incentive for people to save than letting you have a week to live. Just look at those people with their fat stacks trying to buy basic goods. How do you even carry around that money? Is everyone just walking around like a cartoon burglar? So yes, inflation is a problem, but what can you do? Well, introduce a new currency in this case, El Petrodollar, whose value is attached to a tangible asset with inherent value. Interestingly enough, there is one other big benefit to creating an asset-backed cryptocurrency, rather than just a regular currency. It's supposed to help tackle Venezuela's overwhelming debt and prop up its failing economy by circumventing US sanctions. What an enormous benefit to making a cryptocurrency one of your country's major currencies is that it can't be touched by US sanctions. This is why North Korea now trades in Bitcoin and why we recently saw the announcement that Turkey and Iran, after the release of El Petrodollar, have announced the release of their own state-backed cryptocurrencies. And you thought Bitcoin was dodgy. This is particularly interesting in Turkey, which until very recently had laws against cryptocurrency exchanges based on the fact that they saw cryptocurrency as incompatible with Islam. Now, Venezuela's Petro is not perfect, with even their own legislation saying it's illegal, because it's not actually a cryptocurrency, but rather just selling off futures on Venezuelan oil, a point that is pretty hard to overlook. In response, Maduro, well, he just carried on his merry way, because this is Venezuela, and Congress in that nation is like listing your proficiency in Microsoft Word on your resume. It's just kind of there to make you look more legitimate, but it's not influencing anyone's decisions. Nicolas Maduro has said that this new cryptocurrency will promote well-being and bring the power closer to the people. It will be accepted by the government for people to be able to pay their taxes and President Maduro has ordered several state-owned companies to convert a percentage of their sales and purchases into the Petro. Remember, this is Venezuela we're talking about, so finding a state-owned company there is like finding a Starbucks here. Now, there's only one mistake that was made during the initial sales of Petro, but oh boy is it a doozy. The website that sells Petro only accepts US dollars, euros, bitcoin, and ether. And since those currencies are illegal in Venezuela, only foreigners can buy the Petro. Way to make the site issuing your country's new currency and not accept your country's old currency. This has really messed things up because Venezuelans are now relying on the black market to get Petro. Now this might get a little confusing, but currency black markets exist in a lot of countries that artificially peg their currency's value. So think about it this way. If you're watching your savings evaporate at over a thousand percent a year and more stable currencies start to come up, if there's only a limited amount of that currency, you would probably be willing to pay maybe even 10 times the stated value in order to have that stability. This means that in this case, you would have to buy it from people who already own it because the government isn't issuing it anymore. Now, Venezuela did announce that their sale of crypto coins raised 735 million US dollars, which is a ton of money for a country that has been sanctioned into the ground and led them to announce that they are releasing a new asset-backed cryptocurrency. <laughs> no, you're not having a stroke, you heard me right. Because of the success of the Petro, Venezuela is releasing Petro Gold, which is the same concept as before, except this time backed by gold instead of oil. Wow, you guys really got your crypto chips and are going all in on this new boom. That strategy never backfires. So what's the future here? It's hard to tell, but the US government is saying US citizens could face legal sanctions if they buy Petro, because it's helping another country get out of its sanctions. Now that is a stay tuned for a Supreme Court Saturday if I've ever heard one. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of that's all I have to say about that, click here. And please click here to subscribe, and don't forget to like below.